Hey, game makers. It's game dev. Okay, so last time I forgot to do something, but I remembered that I already did it. So I did commit and push. Very important. If I forget to do it next time, or this time, or any time, yell, yell at me in the comments. Okay, so uh, let's uh, recap where we are, uh, which isn't much. We, we aren't really anywhere yet. Uh, we've got basic camera, basic controls. Right now it's arrow keys and spacebar to jump. Uh, pretty basic. Uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, so, what's next? Uh, so, I, I often tell people that one of the things you want to get established as soon as possible is the gameplay loop. Uh, victory and defeat conditions. How do you win? How do you lose? And I know right now it seems like that's kind of putting the cart before the horse. But uh, let me explain. So if I were to make, if I, if I was saying I'm going to make a Mega Man game, the first thing I would do is sit down and say, okay, Mega Man's level based. Let's make a menu where I can select level one. There's only one option on the menu level one and then i can go into that level one room and there's one thing and you know i've got i can just run into it and i win uh and then it says victory level end and then takes me back to the main menu and if you want to go the extra mile it tells you that level one is completed uh so that doesn't sound like a fun game because it's not but the idea there is that it is a game. It's not fun, but there are victory conditions. So you open the level, you run to the, the thing on the level that says you win, and you win. So now that we've got that goalpost, we need to start putting something in there that stops the player from being able to accomplish that goal. So an enemy in his way. Then it's like, well, how is the player supposed to deal with that? Well, give him a gun. Let him shoot the enemy, kill the enemy, so he can move past it and get to the goal. Uh, and what happens when he runs into the enemy and the enemy deals damage and kills him? You get your game over screen, send you back to the menu, where you can see that the menu is not completed, and you can go back into the game. Once we've established this this core loop of victory conditions, defeat conditions, we can then start moving the goalposts. Uh, the idea being that you present a challenge to the player and then give them the tools to overcome it. And this is where you get to really be, you know, this is game design. It's like the root of game design. And what's cool about setting this up early is that when you have a goal you want to go after it changes how you make decisions right you it, you, you can't just drop your character into a, a test room and run around and kind of think that it plays okay because you're not trying to do anything you're just you're just running around and yeah you can get just about anything to feel okay in that context but without a goal to accomplish it it changes how you're going to play your character and suddenly it might not feel so great when you're actually trying to platform and do things. So the sooner you can get to a point where you have a game and you are needing to make decisions to attain victory and avoid defeat, then the sooner you can really start to add things to your game that are meaningful. Instead of getting bogged down by what you might want to add and what you might maybe want to think about adding in the future well i better test it now and make sure my character supports that in case i ever no 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 we don't want to do that uh we want to add what we need to add right now and what we can test is fun right now so i mean i've got a platformer here let's say let's say i want to do like a metroidvania Let, let's commit to that let's say i'm going to do a metroidvania it's not going to be a level based shoot em up sort of thing it's going to be and more of a metroid side of the metroidvania so castlevania is very combat centric very uh lots of weapons very technical enemies 
bo- big bosses and lots of them, uh, lots of abilities, lot, you know, whatever. Uh, very combat focused. Uh, the Metroid side, if you go back and play the old Metroid games, uh, they're not terribly combat focused, if you really think about it. Yeah, Samus has a gun and missiles and bombs and stuff like that. But most of the enemies are basically just interactive or mobile uh, traps, obstacles. They're not like, you know, intelligent things that Samus has to, has to deal with in a, you know, a smart way, like guarding and countering and parrying and stuff like that. It's just, it's about, the combat's very simple, is what I'm getting at. And I think that's how I, how I want uh, what I want to do in this project is not worry about competing against Hollow Knight, right? Or any of those other games that are in that same genre. Let's go into more, you know, kind of chill exploration. Uh, sure, there might be some combat, but it's not going to be, you know, 100 weapons and, you know, 20 bosses that are all going to blow your mind with their combat experience. Uh, not, not interested in getting into that into that ring with the, the heavy hitters there. So, so what does that mean for setting up these goalposts? Uh, I need to, you know, what is, what is the goal of a Metroidvania? Uh, well, like any game, it's to get to a place. Uh, there might be lots of enemies in the way, including a final boss, but ultimately we just need to have some place in the world where the character steps on it, and that's a victory. It's just that simple. And then, once we have that, we can put something in her way and make it so that it's possible for her to not achieve that goal and what happens in that case. So that's what we're going to work on. So let's just do something, again, stupid simple, because that's all that matters right now. I'm going to create a new object. This is going to be an object. Uh, I'm going to make this a little generic for now. Uh, I'm just going to call it an object trigger. I'm going to give a up left square and then add an event. And yeah, I'm just going to use player collision event. Uh, so on collision, uh, we need to let the player know that they've achieved victory. So we're going to go to the victory screen. What's the victory screen? I don't know. We'll create a room. This could be the, uh, uh, could be like the end cut scene. It could be the credits rolling. It could be anything. Uh, so we'll just have something here that says, hey, you won. Go back to the main menu. So room victory. Create a little object to put in here. Object, object victory manager. And he's just going to say draw text view uh, width divided by two, view height divided by two, uh, victory. And draw set text alignment. Alignment is front alignment middle, center middle, and C white. And I don't have any fonts right now. All right. So there's that. And we'll say in the create event, you know what? Let's just do this with an alarm. Alarms are nice and easy. They have no drawback. We're not doing anything fancy here. So we'll just say alarm. And we're going to do a room uh, go to. So do we remember how press start worked? Here, just do a fade transition. Ah, now things are gonna get a little bit complicated. So uh, we'll do a fade transition. We don't really need to worry about, uh, since we're just gonna say, hey, uh, alarm zero equals room speed times two, three, whatever. Uh, so we're just gonna let this victory screen hang out for two or three seconds, and then we'll go to our room. So in here, we don't really need to worry about if the instance already exists because the alarm is only gonna fire once. Uh, 
But this is going to get a little bit more complicated here because if we go into object fade transition, uh, it's it's got a target room of room test. We want to change that. Uh, so we need to make a decision. After you win, where does it go? Uh, well, I would think we would just go back to our main room, which right now is room in it. Uh, eventually, I'll have like room in it, which will have all of my like persistent objects and game manager objects, and then that would go into like a like a logo screen. Like we're we're talking like way down like final game, so it was like room in it, logos, main menu, and then the game kind of branches out from there. So normally, I would say let's go back to the main menu. We don't have one of those yet, so let's just go back to room in it. So all we need to do then is save our inst. Uh, Do a little fancy trick here. Okay. And we're going to go to room init. So if uh, you didn't know you could do this, it's kind of cool. There, there's other ways to do it. This is kind of a little quick way of doing it. Uh, instance create, which this is my own kind of version of it. Instance create depth returns an ID. Uh, since it returns an ID, you can consider this entire function call to be that ID. So instead of doing var inst equals, you know, this, and then inst.target room equals room in it, sure, you can do it that way. Uh, and if you have more than one thing you need to set, you probably should do it that way. But uh, we're just winging it here. And this is definitely not going to stay in the game for terribly long. So all I need to do is change the target room. So that's all I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to create an instance of object fade. It's going to take me to target room. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, so let's go back to our trigger. And when we collide with object player, now this one we do care about uh, if an instance exists or not. Uh, so if we don't have an instance, then we're going to instance create. And this time we're going to say uh, target room. Hey. This one. That's the one I want. Go. Fine. Your fancy clipboard anyway. Uh, target room equals room victory okay so now we just go into our room test we go to our assets we say object trigger is going to be our put this in our instances we change the color on this we down the inspector oh yeah right there we'll just give that a nice green okay so there's our victory Let's see if it works. Run debug mode because things usually don't work. So I might as well just run debug mode. Okay. See if we can get up there. Well, it doesn't. Oh, yes. Ah. Helps if we drag our victory manager into our victory screen. Once more with feeling. Okay, it'll jump up there. I don't know why, like, there's something funky with my physics. Here we go, victory. And we go back to the init room. The init room automatically pushes us back in this, and the game loop has, has started, right? So I can, I can keep doing that and go back and forth as many times as I want. So it seems just stupid, right? Uh, but, but now I can do something like go into room test and say, well, that's, that's going to be over here now. Oh, my collisions. Grab this. Pretty sure I can't get up there. In fact, I can't even get, like, up there to get over there. So... I've now created a problem that my player cannot solve. Uh, and this is, 
you know, that's, this is kind of silly, right? Because I know the answer to the problem. Well, at least I can think of a number of answers to the problem, right? I could give her a wall climb like Mega Man X where you just kind of like bounce up the wall uh, as you jump. I could give her a double jump. Uh, I could give her the ability to just climb the wall like a ladder. Uh, and then once she gets over, over the tall wall, a double jump, or she might even be able to just dash over there. So there's tons of options on how I want to solve this. And so I'll just have to pick some of them, I guess. Uh, but right now, rather than add uh, more game mechanics to my character uh, itself, like movement uh, capabilities, let's do something that's going to hurt her kill her and worry about what happens when we die. Uh, so I'm going to add another trigger and we're going to get rid of all this collision. And we're going to make a death pit. A new object, object death pit, assign that 32 by 32. Go back to room test and death pit. Instances, object death pit, just need the one. Thank you, we're gonna scale that out to here and to here. Just change that color to like a purple a poison pit, whatever. Uh, and I'm going to add a event vision with object player. And so now this is going to kill the player, right? So let's just do this the stupid way. And since destroy other is in a collision event, the other is what you collided with. And then that's going to send us to a game over. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be something that sticks around very long. Uh, when the player dies, we don't want the object that killed the player to be the one that sends us to, uh, let's, let's, let's do this at least somewhat related to the right way. So we're going to destroy the player. So that means in the player's destroy event, we need to handle that the player died and go to the failure room, the game over room. If you so I'm going to add a destroy event is in destroy okay, there we are. so in destroy we're going to say hey it's going to be that same block of code uh shouldn't have to worry about instance exists target room uh, equals we're going to make a new uh placeholder room for game over so we're going to call it room game over you'll create that real fast in fact it's going to be very similar to Victory, so I'm just going to duplicate that. Game over. And then we're going to need a victory man or a game over manager, and it's going to be very similar to that. So let's duplicate that. Game over manager. Draw. Game over. And then right room in it. Uh, now let's uh, do one other thing here. So in game over, our fade transition also fades very quickly right now. So I'm going to go to game over manager and say, when we go here, all right, so now now's the time that we say, okay, uh, we need to set more than one property. So we can just go with. Length equals say, game over fades, we'll say 60. All right, I forget anything. Oh, I need to put the game over manager in the game over room because right now there is a victory manager. That would look funny. Run that. Let's go fall into a pit of death and see what happens. There might be a bug there. Let's see. Okay, we got our pit of death. Punk. Victory. Hmm. Okay. 
to happen there. Uh, collision with Pedro. Did you write pit? Or where are you? Yeah, you're a death pit. Player, instance destroy. An object player. Target room equals room game over. I don't, I don't know how that could happen. Let's uh, hit that debug. So whenever your code runs, but doesn't do what you expect, it's time to use the debugger. So I set a breakpoint uh, on that line of code. Uh, so we should be, when the player is destroyed, going to target room game over. So let's see if we hit that block. Okay, so we hit the breakpoint. So our target room is going to be target game over. So now let's go into our object fade transition and step. And we could say room go to target room, go back to the debugger and push play. Okay, so timer is greater than five and length is greater than five. Okay, target room is three. So this is kind of annoying. It's like target room is three, which, which room is three? So we could say uh, room get name three. That's room game over. Okay, push play. Did I not? Room game over. Victory manager. Really? Did I? It's okay. I'm going to have to watch that back because I could have sworn I came in and dragged in the uh, game over object, but clearly I did not. So, well, you still got a glimpse of kind of the debug process, at least. Ooh, game over. Nice slow fade out and fade in, and we go back to the game. So there we go. We've got victory and defeat conditions. The game starts over when we die. Uh, we could go remove that, uh, go remove the start thing, the automatic. Change this to be if keyboard check pressed. Okay, space. Then, oh, something else I like to do. Like, let, let's do this real fast. Okay, there's a couple of ways we could fix this. This is kind of silly code, right? There's if keyboard check pressed VK space, if not instance exist, and create the thing. We got two levels of brackets here. Uh, so I could just take this, cut it, and say that, and yes. Yeah. So we can and these together and uh, slide over a little bit. And that'll fix that. So we have to wait for the keyboard check to be pressed, and then we'll check if the fade transition, and if it doesn't exist, then we'll create an instance of the fade transition. Another way to fix this, and as your logic gets more and more complex, obviously this is very simple right now, uh, but is we can use something called an early out. Uh, I do this all the time, uh, and it was my first instinct to do this in this particular problem, even though probably overkill, but you should be familiar with the idea. Instead of saying, if this, do all this, and now all of your code's indented, you know, and then that's all the code that's like in your, in that block. Pretend this stuff doesn't exist down here. So you've got like a step event, and it's like, if not paused, you know, run all of this code, right? Uh, that's kind of lame. I don't like having to indent my code just because there's one variable that I'm checking to run all of it or none of it at all. So we can do the inverse of that. We could say if paused, uh, exit, just get out. Now we don't have to indent our code. Now it's just like, it'll just run normally. So we can do something similar in this case where we say, you know what? If, uh, you know, if, 
an instance of object fade transition exists, then we're done with the step event. We're not listening to any more controls. We're not going to uh, do anything else in this step event because I've made a selection. I've pushed space to start the game. The transition is started. We're done. I'm not going to listen to controls. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, so now it'll feel a little bit more like a game, just a little bit. Still really fast transitions. Assuming it's supposed to uh, join something, right? Oh, doing okay. So we've got a we've got a camera now, so we shouldn't be using room width. Using view width divided by two and view height divided by two. Uh, quick side note. Yeah, and I'm just drawing text in the center of the view, and we're assuming the cameras and technically this is something that should be on the GUI layer uh, in the GUI events I'll worry about that later uh, right now I'm just trying to get text on the screen there we go and I die boom game over uh, it fades out back to the start screen press space bar our game again there's no way for me to accomplish the task I've put towards my uh, put in front of my player so let's Fix that real quick. That that simple. Make sure victory works. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that the space bar, like she jumps because I push space on the space uh, start screen, and it uh, makes her jump immediately. Not important. I'll fix that later, kind of automatically. Uh, so there we go, victory, game starts over, boom. So another thing that we've kind of done here is uh, by setting up this system, you, uh, I've done something that I like, uh, that I think everyone should do, especially once you've started to get out of the prototyping phase. I'm so used to it that I don't, I hardly ever use it. I don't recommend ever using room restart or game restart. Just, they're not, they're not terribly reliable. They're a little bit of black box. Uh, I've seen, you know, there's so many things that people are like, oh, when I restart my room, this is still here. Or this tile was changed or, you know, this data is still hanging around or this should have gotten reset, but it didn't. Very ambiguous. It's a black box. Uh, doesn't mean it's useless. I think it's really helpful for one beginners and two prototyping and testing things out and just wanting to reset things real fast. That's fine. But once you start building your actual game, uh, highly recommend avoiding it. Uh, it's just not good. Uh, so that's, I've already done that. If I want to restart the, the room, I need to go out and come back in. That's how I usually recommend restarting a room, by the way. Instead of room restart, Go to one room, come back. If you absolutely have to just restart this room, manage it like going to an empty room and then coming back. Uh, and instead of game restart, I just go back to the main menu and the init screen. And now as the game gets more and more advanced, that's going to start meaning uh, more complicated things. Loading, resetting saved data, you know, not being in a saved game anymore. And being able to select a new save game, all that sort of stuff will need to be handled. Once I get to that point, I've already got it kind of set up, a nice place for that to be handled. So let's go ahead and commit what we've got here. Perfect, our death pit, our targets, everything looks good. Added, and beat, conditions and screens. And push that up. And there we go. All right. So next time we'll probably work on some more fun stuff. Maybe get this character moving a little bit better, controlling. I don't like how, and she's very floaty, right? Everything is just one-to-one. -one. I push left, she moves one pixel left. I push right, she moves one pixel right. The jump is, you tap jump, and she jumps the same height every single time. Uh, so maybe, and then the animations are all janky. Like she Got it. Got about the death pit already. 
uh, she uh, she just falls. Like she doesn't have a falling animation when you walk off a ledge. She just stands there. She falls. Let's we'll we'll clean up this character a little bit and make her a little bit more fun to just move around with. And then uh, we'll put another maybe put another challenge in front of our player and try and uh, give her some tools to overcome it. Maybe we'll see how far we get.